good morning students welcome to 11 science this is our first lecture of chemistry myself mrs priyanka john and i will be starting today with unit 1 some basic concepts of chemistry now you have already got the basic introduction of chemistry in your secondary section you had studied the reactions of chemicals with each other about atoms and their atomicity the structure of an atom in science stream we are going to go into all of this in much detail so let us study first what is chemistry chemistry is the branch of science that deals with the study of matter now what is matter you people are already familiar matter is any substance that has mass occupies space and can be felt by sense organs that is eyes ears nose skin so basically chemistry is the study of matter its composition what is atom made of what is matter made of atoms molecules what is the structure of a given matter what is the shape of that compound what is the shape of that molecule their properties both the physical properties as well as the chemical properties how do they interact with the other substances so basically chemistry is the study of matter its composition structure properties and the interaction with other matter let us go into the importance of chemistry you people are already familiar that chemistry has its use in almost every field it is intertwined with various branches of science right from physics to biology to maths to geology if you can see these are some of the uses of chemistry it is used to study the weather patterns helps us to predict earthquakes volcanoes volcanic eruptions storms cyclones it is also used in the functioning of brain transmission of nerve impulses from the neurons to the body organs and vice versa it is also used in the production of various chemicals that we are familiar with acids alkalis the dyes that are used to color our clothes the polymers plastics teflon coating of our substances these are also used in drugs drugs not just heroin or cocaine it also implies medicine students medicines in the branch in the field of medicines chemistry has played a very important role it has found a cure for aids for cancer if you can see for cancer drugs like cisplatin and texol has been discovered for the treatment of aids the drug azt azeotamin has been established similarly the recent updates of importance of chemistry we can see it is used in the growth of a nation by the production of superconducting ceramics optical fibers as well as our regular use of substances like soaps detergents etc now you can say there is not just the importance of chemistry a chemistry has given us a lot of chemicals but the, at the same time it has resulted in the environmental degradation that is it has resulted in pollution it has resulted in ozone layer depletion the gases that are released from the vehicles from the industries the various by products all have contributed to you can say the pollution global warming but at the same time it has also tried to curb these effects by introducing a new branch of chemistry that is green chemistry wherein scientists are working towards the production of chemicals and towards the production methods that will produce products which are environment friendly one such example is the replacement of cfcs which are studied chlorofluorocarbons in acs refrigerators with hfcs that is hydrofluorocarbons because you people are already knowing that this cfcs are responsible for ozone layer 
depletion. And nowadays, if you see in the energy efficient ACs and refrigerators, substance that is incorporated is HFC. Okay, apart from that, we are also studying how to curb the effects of greenhouse gases like methane gas, CO2 and so on. So basically chemistry has its importance as well as its drawbacks but it is an important aspect of our life and hence we need to study it. Now, in your lower standards you have studied that there are basically three states of matter because chemistry is the study of matter so we are going to study the states of matter. States of matter on the basis of physical properties you have studied matter is divided into three classes solid, liquid and gas. But two more states of matter has been introduced. One is Bose-Einstein condensate and the other is plasma. Now when you consider all these five states of matter that is Bose-Einstein condensate, solid, liquid, gases and plasma all these have their existence at variable temperatures. It's as you go on increasing the temperature this states of matter will be visible. First is the Bose-Einstein condensate which can be observed at a low temperature. Solids you have already studied they have a definite volume and a definite shape. Liquids they have definite volume but no definite shape they will take the shape of the container in which they are poured. Gases they have neither a definite shape nor a definite volume. And the last is plasma which we can observe at high temperature. It is observed in the stars wherein the gases are in the highly ionized form. Matter can be classified on the basis of its chemical properties into two parts. The first is the pure substances and the second is the mixtures. Pure substances. What are pure substances? Pure substances are made of only one constituent particle having the same chemical nature and their composition will also be fixed. Example, copper, gold, silver, water. Water, you people know, formula H2O, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 2 is to 1. So it is having a fixed composition. Another property of pure substances is they cannot be separated by simple physical methods. Like you cannot simply separate the constituent particles of pure substances by simple hand picking methods or physical methods like crystallization, distillation or evaporation. Mixtures. Mixtures are made of two or more substances which do not have fixed composition and they can be separated by simple physical methods. If you look pure substances are further divided into two types elements and compounds. Elements, elements are made of only one type of particle. This particle students may be an atom or it may be a molecule. Why we are saying it may be a molecule also? Because students in the naturally available form we can say sodium is an element exists in a monoatomic form single atom sodium copper Cu but when we consider hydrogen gas dihydrogen gas H2 it is a molecule made of two hydrogen atoms O2 dioxygen made of two oxygen atoms Okay, so when we say elements, they are made of only one type of particle. It may be atom or it may be a molecule. Compounds, when two or more elements, atoms of different elements will combine but in a fixed ratio. Best example, water, H2O, combines in the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen 2 is to 1. You people are familiar with the properties of compounds. Compounds may be formed from say if we consider water two different elements hydrogen and oxygen but they do not retain the properties of the elements from which they are formed. For example if you consider the physical state hydrogen and oxygen in their elemental form are in the gaseous form 
but water that is obtained is in the liquid form similarly if you look at the chemical properties hydrogen burns with a pop sound oxygen is a supporter of combustion but water is used in fire extinguisher so when we say compounds do not retain the properties of the elements from which they are formed and they will the elements are in a fixed ratio now mixtures as we discussed they are made of two or more substances they do not have a fixed composition and can be separated by physical methods mixtures are further of two types homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture how do you differentiate between a homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture homogeneous mixture in this when the substances or the components are mixed they will be completely mixing with each other that is uniformity is observed you cannot observe the various constituent particles in a given homogeneous mixture for example if you take a glass and in that you add water and in that you add 2 teaspoons of say sugar eventually the sugar will melt on stirring and you get sugar solution in this sugar solution you are not able to identify that this is the part of sugar and this is the part of water so we are saying here the components in a homogeneous mixture are mixing completely with each other and there is uniformity that is observed when you consider a heterogeneous mixture the components may or may not mix completely and there is no uniform composition you may be able to see certain constituent particles okay for example oil in water or a mixture of grain and sand okay all these are examples of heterogeneous mixtures in chemistry students there are certain laws that govern how a chemical reaction occurs and now we are going to look at these laws these are termed as the laws of chemical combination the first law is the law of conservation of mass the law of conservation of mass was first studied given by sir anton levoisier and it was verified by lenard what does this law state during any physical or chemical change the total mass of the product remains equals to the total mass of the reactant in short you have studied law of conservation of mass matter can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be changed from one form to another form let us take the example of thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate calcium carbonate molecular formula cacio3 it decomposes to form calcium oxide co plus carbon dioxide co2 now if you look at the molecular mass of calcium carbonate prior to the thermal decomposition atomic mass of calcium 40 atomic mass of carbon 12 and for that of oxygen is 16 so the overall molecular mass of calcium carbonate is 100 grams that is prior to the physical change okay after the reaction two products are obtained calcium oxide weighing 16 or uh, 56 grams and carbon dioxide which is weighing 44 grams which totally equals to atomic uh, molecular mass of 100 grams so as you can see in the given equation the mass of the reactant that was before the reaction is equals to the mass after the reaction has been completed that is 100 grams that is mass of the reactant and product before and after the reaction remains the same now in this we can also account if there are unused reactants in the reaction mixture then that mass also has to be counted exception to the law of conservation of mass are the nuclear reactions that have einstein equation applicable to them that is in this some portion of the mass converts into energy so for this react nuclear reactions law of conservation of mass is not obeyed